Hello, good afternoon to you. Welcome to the Business News, your media live. My name is Alfred Akonsi. Let's go on to our first story this afternoon. Executive Secretary of the Ghana Refugee Board, Kofi Annan, has called for the development of skills of refugees in Ghana to enable them to contribute effectively to the country's economy. This, he says, would also help to improve their livelihoods. He was speaking at a press briefing ahead of the UN Summit for Refugees and Migrants next week in New York. UNHCR's 2010 Global Trends Report shows that many of the world's poorest countries are hosting huge refugee populations. Pakistan, Iran and Syria have the largest refugee populations. However, Pakistan has the biggest economic impact, with 710 refugees for each dollar of its per capita GDP, followed by the Democratic Republic of Congo and Kenya. There are currently 18,457 refugees and migrants in Ghana from 25 different countries. There are many economic benefits countries could gain from refugees and migrants. Executive Secretary of the Ghana Refugee Board, Kofi Anane, has thus called for greater collaboration to enhance the skills of refugees and migrants. Many of the skills that we find among these people are mainly into agro-based activities. We have in place a strategic plan called, which we call the Job Solution Approach Strategy that requires the utilization of the skills within uh, the refugees community as well as the host communities for organized production to maximize productivity to work with the private and public sector. The UN summit seeks to develop a collaborative framework that would provide migrants and refugees safe pathways in their host countries. The petition specifically asks all governments to make sure that every refugee child has an education, that every refugee family has somewhere safe to live, that every refugee can work or learn skills to make a positive contribution to the community. Ghana will attend the UN Summit for Refugees and Migrants next week in New York. Now, two years after Anglo Gold Ashanti suspended its production at its giant loss making gold mine at Obuasi in the Ashanti region, the boom in illegal mining has resumed. Hundreds have broken into sight, dug shafts by hand, and grown so bold in their quest for gold, they started using explosives. Lacking any alternative in an area devastated by the mine's long closure and the loss of thousands of jobs, a lot more people were frustrated. Earnings as high as 10,000 CDs a month from illicitly mined gold, many people are willing to gamble with their lives. Illegal miners like Fatal Tijani have been mining in the absence of an alternative source of income in Obuasi in the Ashanti region. The illegal shaft extends down to 50 meters, stiffened with interlaced branches to prevent collapse. Those shafts now intersect with Anglo Gold's vast network of tunnels, allowing illegal miners to penetrate deeper. For decades, Obuasi and its 100-year-old mine attracted jobs and investment to the envy of other towns. Currently, most shops have been closed, ostensibly because business activities have slammed due to the closure of the mine. The need to survive has forced many of the Anglo Gold Ashanti miners in Obuasi to find alternative livelihood. This town is becoming a ghost town, yeah. and everything has come down. So it's up to the government for us to sit down with the Anglo Ashanti to make sure that they bring this company back. Otherwise, there is no way that we can survive in this town. The town's Premier League football team, Ashanti Goldfields, that won the 2015 Premier League, is now struggling to defend its trophy. Since the mine fell silent, residents say unemployment has soared and crime rate is set to be high. Metals, fuels and oils, representing 60% of Africa's exports, the World Bank said in a recent report, making it vulnerable to global price swings. The recent slam has reduced average growth in oil producing countries from 5.4% in 2014 to 2.9% last year. Anglo Gold Ashanti says the government failed to keep illegal miners out even though the company made much of its concession available to them. 
The best approach to getting things done sustainably and well-funded is to ensure that the mine itself, that is the core business, is back on its feet and is back on its feet in a proper way. And we think the illegal mining situation that we have now is certainly not helping that. Representative of the Association of Small-Scale Miners, Benjamin Annan, says the artisanal miners have nowhere to go. Anglogold is building a tunnel to allow trucks to drive from the surface to the deepest point, but the illegal mining has halted the project. Activities of illegal miners continue to deter potential investors. That's it for business.